Why, hello there, everyone. I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei. Minasan, ohayou gozaimasu. Yojun. So today I'm checking the incubators, and what I'm essentially doing is I'm just checking for anything that's rotting or anything that's molding and just taking it out. It's nothing too difficult. Now I do check incubators daily, but I try not to open them too often because the point of having an incubator is to maintain humidity within it so that way the eggs can develop and molt properly into second instar and whatnot. And it's really self-explanatory and not too difficult. But anyhow though, let us get right back into this video. This incubator here has OPT slings and these are the only survivors of the sack that the mother ate. Now of the 10 eggs with legs, one of them did not make it, but the other 9 did. And the nine that did made it, they look really healthy, and their abdomens are actually kind of big, so it tells me that they're thriving for sure. And I do have high hopes that these will make it to second instar, but let us wait and see. And I will also show you guys the Neoholothila Insei and their incubators as well, because I do have two incubators of Neoholothila Insei. And some of you may be wondering about minor stuck molts on these first instar, and in my experience, usually once they molt out to second instar, the molts that are stuck usually comes off. So minor stuck molts, such as the legs and whatnot, usually those are not really big issues because tarantulas can amputate their own legs if needed and regrow them back in the next following molts. Now if it's like severely stuck molts, as in like they are stuck, they can't move and whatnot, then that's when you usually want to help out. But for the most part, most of these guys should be fine. So let's actually talk about this incubator here. So you may have noticed that there are some first instar and then a bunch of eggs. And these eggs are infertile eggs, which we pulled this egg sack in a video. These are infertile eggs. So essentially, these eggs were not fertilized. Therefore, they're pretty much just duds. So if you're breeding tarantulas for the first time and you can't tell if the eggs are fertile or not, they just put all of the eggs in the incubator and just wait over time to see if the eggs develop. If they don't, they either they're dead or they're just infertile eggs. Now usually at this stage, for me, I will take out the infertile eggs, but I have seen that these guys are eating them, so I'm just going to leave them in. Sometimes first instar or even second instar will actually eat these infertile eggs. And honestly, if it counts as extra nutrition, then you might as well just let them have it. Now sometimes infertile eggs will actually start to mold and, you know, develop uh, not so good things on it. So you really want to make sure that you take them out if needed. So usually like 99% of the time, I will actually take out the infertile eggs. But in this case, since these undeveloped infertile eggs are not really molding out or anything, and these first instar are eating them, I might as well just leave them in for now. But uh, anyhow though, jumping into the next incubator here, these are from the most recent egg sac that I pulled here in the channel of the other Neohotela Insei. And these look great, honestly. And it's surprising, honestly, how healthy they all look. Now there are some infertile eggs in this incubator as well, so some of these eggs were infertile, along with a bunch of these guys that were fertile, which you're seeing as first instar now. So I'm just going to leave those infertile eggs in this incubator as well, and take out any of the infertile eggs that are starting to mold out and whatnot. But the reason why I usually take out infertile eggs is because when they mold out, it spreads pretty quickly, so it's kind of annoying to deal with at times. Like how you saw in the OBT sling incubator. So that's usually why I do it. But anyhow though, I should show you guys how many of the slings I have left from the previous XX of the Neo Hotel Insei. And this is pretty much all I have left. And these I will be keeping for a new bloodline and just for future breeding projects I guess. I may sell some of these as they get larger over time. But as of now, I'm keeping the majority of these here. And if you're wondering what happened to the rest of the slings I produced and what I did with them, I sold them off through wholesale to other tarantula breeders and vendors. So some of you guys in the future may actually coincidentally or accidentally have my slings. So yeah, let us see what happens in the future. So essentially now what I'm doing is pretty much putting these females back on weight because after laying the X axe and everything, they have lost a lot of weight. So our goal now is to feed these females back up and to ensure that they're healthy. And honestly, their takedowns were not that aggressive as I thought they would be because their abdomen size were small. So I was thinking they were super hungry, but all but one so two of the three had a very soft takedowns and one had a pretty good takedown and i'm going to save that one to the end so essentially everyone we're wrapping up the breeding season for this year so everything from now on is going to be slowing down quite a bit 
and our main focus is going to be mostly on rehousing these slings and growing them up for the future, so that will be kind of interesting, so stick around guys. And also, my collection has been downsized drastically. It is, uh, very puny. You could say it's almost nothing. <laughs> it's pretty small, I'll tell you what. I've, uh, yeah, I, I just hope that uh, people are not disappointed that my collection is smaller. But the reason why it's smaller is because I don't have a lot of space. So I'm very picky about what I choose to keep and what I choose to sell. And I did sold away a lot of females and a lot of things. So that way I can make space for future breeding projects. Because as much as I love being a tarantula breeder, I am not a large scale tarantula breeder. I don't really like to lie to you guys. So I will be transparent on that. So when it comes to my breeding projects, I can't really go full scale as in being very large in my tarantula breeding projects. So I truly appreciate everybody that enjoys my videos and enjoys my breeding projects. And trust me guys, I'm not quitting tarantula breeding projects. We're just stopping because it's getting colder for the season and my collection is downsizing. So <laughs> it's a, uh, oh, it's not a rinse and repeat, but it's more like a recycle or a life cycle, I guess. We grow the collection, downsize it to make space for better things. But I hope that someday all of this will pay out. And in the future though, if possible, this is a pipe dream of mine's, but I would really like to have my own place for tarantula breeding. Like an actual facility or something. That will be the ultimate life dream goal, but that is more of a fantasy dream than an actual reality as of now. But let us see what happens in the future. Anything's possible, right? So let us push on. But uh, I guess I'll call this a video for today. So, without further ado everyone, I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and stick around. I upload every single Tuesday and Friday, and also support me on IG and on Patreon, and with that, stay lax, and Laxo out, from the Kumo Sensei.